All right. Chapter 19 deals with the vertebrates. And really we're talking about one animal phylum, that is phylum chordata, right, the chordates. Chordates have bilateral symmetry. They're mostly vertebrates. But all chordate embryos have three, uh, four characteristics that are similar uh, in the developing embryo. All chordates have a notochord. This notochord is a long rod of stiffened material that uh, helps support the embryo during development. Uh, later, most of the time, this will turn into either uh, bone or cartilage. Uh, all chordate embryos have a dorsal hollow nerve cord. They all have a pharyngeal have pharyngeal gill slits. For pharynx is the throat area, and if you look at a developing human embryo, uh, there are gill slits on the throat. Uh, those quickly form over because we don't breathe uh, oxygen from water. We don't need those, so. Uh, those are uh, filled over and uh, uh, we develop lungs uh, and all uh, chordate embryos have a tail at some point in their development uh, if that's not needed that is absorbed and used that those cells are used and absorbed uh, used other places in, the, in development now chordates uh, like I said, are mostly vertebrates. However, there are two chordates who retain the notochord instead of the notochord developing into either cartilaginous or, or bone uh, vertebrae. Uh, and these two invertebrate chordates are the lancelet. It's a little uh, marine uh, animal that filters uh, food and also the tunicate or sea squirt which also uh, filters food. These are the only two uh, chordates that retain the notochord. Uh, the rest the notochord develops into a backbone. So what we're going to do now is look at the classes of, of chordates, right? and uh, what makes them different from others. Uh, the first class is class Agnatha. These are jawless cartilaginous fish that don't have paired fins like uh, the cartilaginous fishes or the uh, bony fishes have. And uh, there are two major types. There's lampreys and they're hagfish. Lampreys are parasitic and since they don't have jaws they have these things called oral discs. They're op uh, rounded uh, structures around the mouth that have teeth and uh, uh, structures there that allow them to attach to a prey. Uh, lamprey will attach to other fish they will suck their life juices out of them. Uh, the, the sea lamprey made its way into the Great Lakes because of the opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway and as a result a lot of the whitefish and lake trout in the Great Lakes uh, were the populations were uh, decreased significantly uh, and uh, so as a result, uh, you couldn't catch whitefish or lake trout uh, for long periods of time. Now they have found out where the uh, sea lamprey goes to uh, spawn, and they've been able to use certain uh, chemicals to, uh, to help eradicate uh, the sea lamprey from the Great Lakes. Uh, and the lake trout and whitefish are coming back. Uh, the other type is called the hagfish. The hagfish has an oral disc as well, and it will attach to decaying uh, carcasses of fish and mammals and things that are on the bottom of the ocean, and they just kind of 
wiggle and writhe and twist and they just as they do they just rip off pieces of flesh and then swallow those uh, so hagfish but uh, Kentucky has probably six or seven different species of lampreys now remember the phylum that lampreys would uh, be in is chordata all right so lampreys and hagfish are in the phylum chordata but they're in the class agnatha but but there might be a question on your final that asks what uh, phylum do lampreys and hagfish uh, or, or which one are they classified in and that would be uh, chordata right Class chondri means cartilage. Ichthys means fish, like ichthus, right? Uh, and so these are cartilaginous fish. So they have jaws, and they're cartilaginous. And uh, I didn't say this before with Agnatha, but they are both cold-blooded. That means that their external environment dictates their body temperature. So uh, if you see a snake on the road that's there because it is trying to warm itself up because it does not have a constant body temperature. So uh, fishes are cold blooded, right? Uh, of course, this is jaws, dun, 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 right? Mm -hmm. A prominent dorsal fin on, on the sharks, right? Uh, they are uh, all uh, carnivores, uh, except for some that are filter feeders. The actually the largest fish in the world is a shark. It's called the whale shark, and it actually uh, filters out krill, which is a small shrimp-like uh, animal that it feeds on. Uh, same with the large manta ray. It is also a filter feeder. But things like stingrays and skates actually eat uh, crabs and other crustaceans uh, on the bottom of the, of the ocean. And then you have your sharks, which are uh, predators that continually uh, swim around looking for uh, prey. Um, there are several that will attack humans. Uh, the the one that gets the most notoriety, of course, is the great white shark, but tiger sharks will also attack humans. Uh, the main was sunk, uh, and when it was sunk, a lot of the uh, sailors on the main were uh, fed upon by uh, tiger sharks, and a lot of those people. Uh, died because of the injuries inflicted by uh, the tiger sharks but great white sharks uh, have been known to uh, attack people and eat people and uh, especially in areas where they're surfing all right the major major food source of great whites are seals cetaceans all right and so if you look at a silhouette of a surfer on a surfboard and then you look at the silhouette of a seal and you're down below this silhouette and those silhouettes are up on the surface of the water and you can't see very well anyway they look a whole lot like each other all right and so a lot of the great white uh, attacks have been with surfing uh, attri attributed to it. Um, but the most shark attacks, especially those that have been common here uh, recent years along uh, the Atlantic and Gulf Coast have be have come from a species called the blue, uh, not blue, the bull shark, right? Bull shark. Bull sharks are uh, very, uh, aggressive and uh, curious uh, most shark attacks if you look 
uh, at shark attacks and, and all the data, most of them will show up occurring either at morning or at dusk. Uh, they're caught because uh, sharks, like a lot of animals, are crepuscular. That means they are most active during dawn and dusk. And if it's if the if the uh, lighting is not great anyway, and there's a lot of splashing around, uh, that tends to attract bull sharks to see what's going on. It could be food source, etc., and they will attack. So it is it's really uh, imperative that you don't go swimming at, at dawn and dusk. Uh, but they have a uh, sharks have a large liver system and that allows them to be able to uh, withstand fresh water for long periods of time in fact the mississippi river from its mouth in the gulf of mexico until you get to uh, st louis and paducah is free flowing that means that there are no locks and dams so theoretically, on the along Kentucky in the lower, extreme lower Ohio and Mississippi River, there actually could be bull sharks swimming around. Now, one was caught in a commercial net just uh, around St. Louis uh, in the 1930s. So they probably do venture up the Mississippi. Uh, just not in great numbers. But chondriacthes, as opposed as opposed to osteichthys, osteo means bone, ichthys fish. So these are the bony fish, and they have most of them have paired fins and scales uh, that help protect them. Um, there are all sorts of different types of bony fishes. Eels are actually fishes. <clears throat> but out in the river, the Salt River, let's say, you'll see sunfishes, like the long ear sunfish is very common. You'll see channel catfish, like we have uh, here. Uh, and uh, out in the ocean, of course, things like tuna and cobia and mahi mahi and all those are all types of bony fishes now kentucky streams also have these little uh fishes called darters all right again kentucky is third in the world in the number of these types of little fishes they do not have a swim bladder if you look at a goldfish in an aquarium or goldfish bowl it doesn't do much as far as movement to be to stay in the same place in the water column that's because it has a gas filled sac in it called a swim bladder that allows it to be buoyant the darters don't have this so they scoot around on the bottom of the stream with their fins uh, like little legs and so that's why they call they're called darters is because they dart around they're very colorful this is called the rainbow darter. It has red and orange and yellow and uh, blue uh, markings on it. Um, again, Kentucky is uh, third, ranks third na uh, in the world in the number of these uh, uh, darter species behind, again, Alabama and Tennessee. So crayfish, Freshwater mussels and darter species, we rank third in the world in the number of different species of those groups of, of animals. Class amphibia are frogs, toads, and salamanders. Uh, amphibians lay their eggs in water and their larvae will live in water for a certain amount of time. The adults will either emerge from the water or stay in the water but their life cycle requires water in order to to make a complete life cycle they have moist skin some of them have lungs 
some of them have gills, uh, and some of them, some salamanders actually absorb oxygen through their moist skin. Uh, but toads are are jumping predators that live on the land uh, when they're larvae, they're tadpoles, uh, but they uh, come up and live the rest of their life and lives in, on land. Frogs still remain around water, uh, carnivores as well. <clears throat> they uh, uh, will live uh, in proximity to water uh, for the most part. And salamanders, some live in or near water, some live uh, on our terrestrial up on, under logs and things like that. <clears throat> the largest of the salamanders is called the hellbender. It can grow to about a foot, foot and a half long. Uh, it's predator on fish. And if you were to find one, they, uh, they don't have gills that you can see. The ones that have the gills are called mud puppies. They can grow up to about eight or nine, ten inches long. Uh, they are very a lot more common than the hellbender. If you find a hellbender, it doesn't have uh, external gills and it's about a foot, foot and a half long. Uh, you need to contact Fish and Wildlife or uh, Kentucky Nature Preserves uh, because they are uh, doing studies on their distribution and how uh, common they are. So they would, they'll ask you questions about where you found it and how big it was and all that kind of stuff. The next class is class Reptilia and they have dry scaly skin. Uh, if, you, if you ever te uh, touch a snake, it's not it's not stick or wet. Its skin's dry. It has scales, and they are the first to have amniote eggs. They, uh, some of their, some of them will actually lay eggs like birds, uh, and uh, so uh, these dry, scaly skinned animals do not need water for reproduction. Uh, in fact, even the aquatic ones will. Uh, like the snapping turtle will lay its eggs up, up uh, away from the water and then will go back to the water after they've laid their eggs. So the first group are crocodilians. There are two uh, crocodilians that live in the United States, the American alligator and the American or Cuban crocodile. Uh, the, the Cuban our American crocodile lives in the very tip, uh, freshwater areas or, or uh, uh, brackish areas along the Keys and the very tip of southern Florida, uh, Everglades. Um, not very common at all. Most of the most of the uh, individuals of that species live in Cuba. Um, American alligator though is making a comeback. <clears throat> it was endangered at one time. Uh, the use of, of DDT uh, to kill insects from cotton and other plants uh, softened eggs and those eggs then when they were laid uh, and and were set upon by the by the adults crushed so uh, the this stopped uh, reproduction of the species and uh, they became very rare but now are very very common uh, two things about uh, things about the differences between alligators and and crocodiles one is the cro alligator has a rounded snout versus a more narrowed pointed snout on the crocodile uh, when their eye, when their mouth is closed, and the, uh, the alligator teeth are not exposed, but when you have the crocodile close its mouth, you actually have teeth that are exposed to the outside of the mouth. And lastly, uh, crocodiles have cat's eyes versus black eyes from the alligators. Uh, this picture is not really of an American crocodile; that's a saltwater crocodile from. 
uh, Southeastern Asia. Uh, it is a killer. Uh, it will lay in wait in muddy waters for anything that comes close to the water and then they will grab it uh, and pull it under and drown their victim and then stuff it underneath the bank and then come back and eat piece by piece later. Class Reptilia also has lizards. Uh, Kentucky doesn't have many species of lizards. The most common group are skinks. The broadhead skink and the southeastern five-line skink are, are, very, are fairly common in Kentucky, and so is the eastern fence lizard. But those are really, there's a coal skink and ground skink as well, but th those are about the only species except for the six-line race runner, which is a little bit larger lizard, but uh, has been found on one occasion in land between the lakes area. Uh, does not usually come up this far north. Also, reptiles are turtles, or turtles are reptiles. Turtles have a shell. Uh, there are many species of turtles in Kentucky. Of course, probably the most common is a terrestrial form, the eastern box turtle. Uh, but there are a lot of aquatic ones, uh, or semi-aquatic. The probably the most common is the common snappy turtle. Uh, they can get uh, you know 40 50 pounds and be the size of, uh, of a car rim uh, so they can get very big versus the alligator snapper which can be oh, 100, 150 pounds uh, and has uh, it's found in the far western extremes of Kentucky in the little uh, lakes and shallow lakes that uh, are next to the floodplain of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Uh, you can tell the difference between common and alligator. Alligator has tent, have these spikes on its carapace, tent-shaped uh, spikes, and on the common snapper it's smooth. Uh, <clears throat> they're both uh, you don't want to mess with. Uh, too much because they will bite and bite hard. Also the soft shell turtles uh, will bite uh, and cause a painful bite as well if you mess with them. They're aquatic. Lastly are the snakes which do not have legs uh, and there are all sorts of species of, of snakes in Kentucky. But there are four that are venomous that are found in Kentucky. Again, the pygmy rattlesnake, which is common more southward, it has been found once in the land between the lakes area. Uh, it's, it's not common at all in Kentucky. Uh, I don't know if it has ever been found again since that one uh, collection. Uh, but the other three are found throughout Kentucky, uh, different areas. Uh, timber rattlers are found from far western Kentucky all the way to eastern Kentucky uh, and around most area except for the bluegrass region uh, since tends to be a little bit not their habitat. Uh, but they, but the, like the uh, pinnacles out at, at uh, Berea and the knobs area they are very common there. Uh, most people, they have a neurotoxin, a nerve tissue, nerve toxin. Most people that uh, die from from snake bites in Kentucky are from handling uh, timber rattlers. All right. The other two are. Uh, closely related. They're found in the same genus, the copperhead and the cottonmouth. The copperhead is found uh, throughout Kentucky. Uh, it can be found in Anderson County along uh, the Palisades area uh, along the Kentucky River. Uh, they are semi-aquatic so they can they can live in and, ar and around and uh, in water. Uh, they have a fairly low toxic uh, venom. 
Uh, adults may not even have to have antivenom if bitten by a copperhead. Cottonmouth has a little bit more uh, uh, venomous bite. Uh, it's found from I-65 area west in Kentucky. Uh, if you have come in contact with a snake in the water, it could have been a, cop a copperhead or it, more than likely it's a water snake. They are extremely aggressive. They uh, will bite and they can uh, cause a bite that has uh, bacteria in it that could cause some uh, pain and, and uh, infection. But cotton mouths are found far western Kentucky. Um, out of all, I've worked 28 years in the field in Kentucky and really uh, came in contact with, with a, that I knew that I came in contact with two poisonous snakes and both were cotton mouths in western Kentucky one in uh, a swamp pond called Murphy's Pond which has a very high density of cotton mouths and then one other cotton mouth that was sitting uh, at one of our streams uh, and in the morning it was trying to sun, it sun itself uh, but those are the only two uh, poisonous snakes that I actually came in contact with and recognized that they were there with me. Class AVs are birds, okay? They have scaly skin too, but their scales are modified into feathers that allow them to fly. Most of them uh, fly in Kentucky. All of them fly. We don't have any birds that are just terrestrial that use their legs uh, or or swim in the the water. All right, most all of them fly, fly, and they have a constant body temperature, uh, like mammals, and so they are called warm-blooded. All right, and so the smallest of our uh, birds are in Kentucky is the ruby-throated hummingbird. Uh, most people don't think of turkeys as f flying birds, but they do fly. Uh, they don't fly long distances, but they do fly in short distance spurts. Uh, of course, that's a game bird, and if left up to Benjamin Franklin, would be the national bird. But that is the bald eagle. And the bald eagle is now making a comeback. Same reasons as the alligators, DDT, uh, uh, stop reproduction of, of most all of the raptors, which are the birds of prey. Uh, and now the uh, bald eagle is making a comeback. It's nesting in several places along the, uh, in Kentucky, a lot of places in Kentucky actually, uh, and has nested in the past at Taylorsville Lake, just west of here. Uh, very prominent uh, bird of prey. Of course, the upper right-hand corner is the northern cardinal. It's our state bird. And then the bottom bird is the prothonotary warbler. I threw that in because it was at my uh, research uh, lake that I did my, my master's thesis work in, and it is just a pretty bird with a an awesome little song and and so I